Hello everyone, my name is Incoherence and welcome to Exanima. So if you were to tell me that you've never heard of Exanima, that you don't know what it is or what it's about, I would not be surprised. So in an effort to remedy this, I just want to give you a very short, brief explanation as to what it is and why it is I want to play it. Alright? Just a very small amount of information, I'm going to inject it into your brain, Matrix style. <laughs> I know Kung Fu. All right, a couple of years ago, there was a Kickstarter campaign uh, for an open world RPG game by the name of Sui Generis. The main selling point of Sui Generis is that it has a physics-based movement and combat system. And the developers behind that game have since released a standalone title by the name of Exanima. Now, I think the reason they released Exanima is it's a means of generating revenue in the meantime, while they develop the proper RPG. It's a way, uh, it's sort of like a proof of concept of their game for people who are not quite sure, they're on the fence, and in addition, I suppose, it is a way for Kickstarter backers to get their hands on a product while they get the uh, the RPG Sui Generis into a playable state. Now, Exanima has two gameplay modes, we're only gonna look at one. The first being a isometric dungeon crawler, which I imagine mimics the full RPG experience. That's We're not going to look at that one at all. <laughs> Blah, why, who wants to play an RPG, am I right? <laughs> the second game mode, and the one that I got hooked on, is the arena mode. Essentially, what this is, is a gladiatorial team management game, and I, by God, I gotta tell you, for whatever reason, that tickled me in just the right way. So I got extremely addicted to it for a couple of days, um, I just like tycoon games, I suppose. Sort of like Battle Brothers, where you're controlling, instead of a character, a full mercenary company. This is in sort of in the same vein, where you have to manage a team of fighters. Well, I don't want to get too hung up on the details. I, I don't want to have to explain too many things, so I think what we'll do first is we'll meet our team members, our fighters, and then we'll hop into combat, and then we can sort of explain things as we go. But to begin with, I think we really need to meet Nadine. Say hello, Nadine. Hello! <laughs> Here she is. She is our team manager, and I gotta tell you, first things first. Oh, look at that. She's looking over the shoulder. <laughs> How scintillating. Uh, she is a drunken bar brawler. And for whatever reason, she has been drawn to the arena circuit, and she has scrounged up enough money to actually begin to run a team of gladiators. I'm not sure how she managed this. I suppose it was through drunken bar brawls, placing bets, these sorts of things. And she's actually got four fighters under her at the moment. Uh, under her employ, I should say. I don't want any sort of, you know, <laughs> innuendo there. Uh, women in business, you gotta be very careful what you say, am I right? Um, <laughs> first things first, I just want to say, I've also been playing a lot of Morrowind recently. So when I created all of these characters, I had a race in mind, a Morrowind template race. Uh, so it'll be quite obvious once I introduce you to the guys, all right? And I have to say as well, I've played a few hours into this, and the reason I did that was to get the team to an appreciable, entertaining level, where you're not just watching these guys get the shit kicked out of them because they have literally nothing. Instead, I got a few items, I got a bit of gold, I got a few skills, etc, etc. Things we'll look at later. But uh, in the meantime, while I was playing, I sort of created a story <laughs> for each of these characters. Um, as I do. So as I introduce you to the team, I'm going to very geekily explain to you the, my head canon as to who these people are and why they are in the arena. Alright, so we'll manage the team here. First things first, of course, here is Nadine. Now, at the moment she's holding a metal bar, which is my favorite weapon to use. But all you need to know about Nadine is that she is a take-no-shit drunken bar brawler. And as I said, she managed to defeat so many people in pugilist matches that she is able to actually fund her own gladiator team. And, weirdly enough, while she was brawling in those bars, she caught the eye of two brothers. Two Nords, the first being uh, Anders, the tall, smart, handsome one, uh, who is, of course, a swordsman with a dashing black jacket and just perfectly quaffed blonde hair, and his slightly shorter, more muscular, dumber brother, Harold. Although, 
it has to be said about Harold, he has a heart of gold. A heart of gold and the anger of a cave bear. <laughs> and the weird thing about these brothers is that for whatever reason, they've both sort of fallen head over heels for Nadine. I think it's because she's a big, beautiful woman who uses her fists to solve problems, as all good Nordic women should do. Now, they decided to enter Nadine's employ in an effort to win her heart, so there's a bit of a brotherly rivalry going on here, where they try to one-up each other <laughs> in the arena in an effort, as I said, to win Nadine's heart. But that's not going to work with Nadine, because she's a... She's all about business at the moment. You know, she's got her mind in the game, not in the pants of Harold or Anders, whomever uh, she may prefer. That's, that's, that's Nadine's private thoughts, and that's something we should not dwell on too long. So those are the brothers. Of course, there's a bit of a rivalry there, and we'll move on to our next character, who is Marcus. Now, I imagine Marcus is a retired Imperial Legionary. He's not a Centurion, but perhaps a step down from there, like a uh, sergeant rank um, officer. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, he retired to what I can only assume would be Cyrodiil province, and he became so bored of his pensioner life that he decided to enter the employ of Nadine to get some excitement back, and as an additional, uh, I guess as a bonus, earn some gold on the side, because as we all know, the pension for Imperial Legionaries, not great. Not great. Uh, I imagine he was perhaps garrisoned in the forts on Morrowind, or maybe he could very well have been a legionary fighting the rebellion in Skyrim. Hundreds of years apart, I know, but I haven't decided which conflict he made. I think he was he's a Morrowind kind of guy. Uh, so he's taken to using a blacksmith's hammer to beat his enemy senseless, which is very bizarre. He could have gone for a sword, he could have gone for this fucking handsaw here, a bill hook, anything, a battle axe, but he decided a blacksmith's hammer, which I'm sure there's some sort of symbolism in that, but I can't... I don't care to to uh, to ask Marcus about it because he is quite short. I mean physically quite short, but also quite short in on the fuse. He's a no nonsense guy. So him he and Nadine get well get on well in that way. They're both no nonsense, down to business sort of people. Uh, which sort of leaves Fatima sort of uh, outside the group. Now Fatima is a red guard and for whatever reason she is not wearing her fucking boots. That's very bizarre. Now Fatima she doesn't speak a lot, so we're not entirely sure whether she she speaks the language here. It's very, very bizarre. I'm not sure how it is she came to the arena. Basically, she just showed up on the doorstep one day and spoke with Nadine behind closed doors, and boom, she was on the team. Uh, and she is, I have to say, a pole arm expert. She is currently wielding a quarterstaff, but uh, as I understand it, in... Uh, Hammerfell? Is that the home of the Red Guard? I can't recall. In Hammerfell, let's just say that. Whatever the home of the Red Guard is. Uh, she was a spear expert, which is a bit bizarre because, of course, the Red Guard are known to be sword masters, but uh, there you have it. She is a quiet, strong spear master. And at the moment, a bit of a blank slate. I don't really know exactly what personality traits to imbue Fatima with, so I don't know. Maybe that's something we can develop as the episodes go on. But that's our team, essentially. Uh, I don't want to speak too much about skills or weaponry at the moment, but I just want to point out that Anders is a sword and buckler kind of guy. He's currently wielding a machete and his trusty buckler. Uh, Harold, of course, you may have seen, is swinging a massive fucking sledgehammer around, which is the perfect Nordic weapon. And then, of course, Marcus has the hammer. I assume eventually he will become a maceman, like a sword, uh, sorry, a shield and mace kind of guy. Sort of like a paladin in a way. <laughs> and then, of course, Fatima is a quarterstaff, spear, polearm type person. She eventually could perhaps use this bill hook. I'm not sure. But uh, I think it would be best for us to hop into combat so you can get a feel as to what the uh, what this game is all about. Uh, we have a challenger aspirant that will, be, that will be fine for, I believe. Let's get Anders into the game here. Anders fighting for Nadine's hand in marriage. Okay, so we're currently facing against a dude who has apparently decided to wear the exact same outfit we have, and that's perhaps the worst thing to have ever happened. 
I mean, sword fights are one thing, but God, you do not want to show up to a duel wearing the same clothes as the guy. That's that's a whole other level of horror. Okay, so I'm kind of kiting the guy at the moment. Uh, basically, the one thing you need to know about the combat in Exanima is it's incredibly hard to get a grasp on, first of all. Secondly, it, as I said, is physics-based. So this means I need to coordinate my movement and my attacks. If I swing standing still, there's no impact to that. If I swing backing up, there's zero impact to that. So I actually need to swing while moving forward. I need to throw my momentum into my swings to get some appreciable damage. So the the red circle here, this is my cursor. Oh shit, we just took a blow there. And this is what I use to actually swing my sword around. Okay, so we're, I'm gonna try to slay this guy with... Oh good god, we just <laughs> hit him in the face with the machete. Cut him like sugar cane. <laughs> we're gonna try to kill this guy with... Oh god, we just got him in the neck too. This guy is just not doing well at all. Oh, he, blew, he fucking parried these blows. And Oh, I thought that was the end of it right there. There we go. Okay, he is apparently down. Let's chop him while he's down. <laughs> so there's um, a few other things I should mention. Uh, your character and enemy characters parry and block attacks automatically. So there's a bit of finesse to, you know, stepping out of his attack range, stepping into attack. Uh, you can block attacks and then swing immediately after. These sorts of things. There, so there is a bit of uh, strategy to, to the combat. Um, there's also a few swings here. So I can swing across my body either direction. I can do a head chop and then of course I can do a stab as well. So these are all attacks at my disposal and these are affected by in some small way by what skills I have and that's something we'll talk about later. Um, let's do another match. I think perhaps with Harold or Fatima. That would be fun. Alright, let's take a look at the uh, the match list. Uh, we have some pugilism matches, which is perfect for Nadine. Nadine is well known for solving her problems with other team managers by punching their teeth down their throat. It's horrendous. Oh my god, and we have the match of the female team managers. Now, <laughs> I, I gotta say, the, uh, the physics simulation in this game is just amazing. I really love the way the characters throw <laughs> all of their body mass behind these hits, especially Nadine. Nadine looks fucking crazy while she's doing it. Okay, let's concentrate here. Let's get the old 1-2 in there. Oh, we, she fucking dodged us there. My god. Now, the reason I have Nadine fight uh, fist fights and solely fist fights is um, because there's actually two types of damage in the game. So you may see on the bottom there I have two bars. The first being yellow, the first being blue. Blue, I imagine, is mana at some point. Uh, but the yellow is actually my health bar. So, as I said, there are two types of damage. The first being yellow damage and red damage. Uh, red damage essentially being, uh, like, let's just think of it as blood. Slashes, stabs, cuts, these sorts of things. Yellow being stamina damage, which is caused by blunt objects. Uh, hammers, fists. Oh my god, that was a strike. There was another one right into the fucking jaw. God damn it, Nadine does not give a shit. Um... So, in essence, what happens is if you take a blow from a hammer or a sledgehammer or a mace, you receive stamina damage. It's much easier to cause stamina damage. And once you receive, once you, uh, you're at zero stamina, your character is knocked out unconscious. And um, that is a bit of a problem. However, it is more of a problem if you receive slashes, stabs, and these things that cause red damage, because once you fill your bar entirely with red, your character is dead outright. They are slain. Um, and this is a problem for Nadine, because she is our team manager. And if your team manager is slain in a match, you're, it's game over. You have your save, it gets erased, eventually, uh, essentially. So this is a problem. Um, so <laughs> this is the reason I have Nadine fight fist fights. Oh my god, we're going we're in slow motion here. I'm not sure what's going <laughs> what's going on. I think uh, we're having some FPS issues with the uh, arena with the rain perhaps. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh god, but you can see here Nadine is at half health because she's taken a few punches. Uh, but that's just fine. I should also mention that stamina damage is actually rejuvenated between matches instantly. 
Uh, whereas uh, actual damage, health damage, takes a few... Uh, I want to say takes a few matches to replenish fully. Holy shit, Nadine just... <laughs> Gave that woman the old one, too, and now she's out for the count. Good God. Coming in here like George Foreman. Uh, fucking a show winging. Um, so I think we ought to fight some proper matches here to get some gold. Once we get a little bit more gold, we can check out the shop. Because we have checked out the team management. We've checked out the match list. And I think it is about time we check out the shop. Okay, let's get Harold into a match. And, uh, by God, his sledgehammer is... Fun as all hell. We're gonna kite this woman very, sh very briefly here, and then we'll go swinging. Here it is. Nope, uh, I stepped too far in, and uh, as you saw, I hit her with the, the haft of the, uh, the weapon, which is essentially useless. So you also need to be mindful of your distance because I need to hit her with. Oh shit, she slashed me in the arm. God damn. I actually need to hit her with the. God, she is slashing me, quite horribly. I need to hit her with the, uh, the head of the hammer to do any damage, but she is actually blocking me quite effectively. And uh, counter-attacking. Okay, we need to st <laughs> take a step back, take a measure of the, uh, the situation here. Oh my god, that should have been instant death. We hit her <laughs> right in the fucking head, full force, and we did it again. Okay, so she's out for the count. Like, permanently. <laughs> Good god. Well, you can see here that Harold has received quite a bit of of damage here and he's going to have to rest up a few a few matches before we get him back into the arena so in that way it's actually quite necessary you have a full stable if you will of fighters so that you can switch them out when need be which is why I have four at the moment um, okay so I should mention that uh, this fat fucko up in the top corner here he is the shopkeep of the arena and uh, he sells weapons and armor. Now, at the moment, it looks to me like it is mostly plate armor. Nothing that we can really use because all of our characters are quite low level. Um, so you may have seen earlier the mention of rank. That's something I'll check. Uh, I'll talk about very briefly once we're done here, once I see if there's any items we can buy. That would be useful. We could possibly buy some leather gauntlets, a cloth tunic, Blue, periwinkle, baby blue, not so much. I do have to say, though, I really enjoy the way they do armor in Exanima. Essentially, what's going on is like a layering system. So historically, when a knight wore full plate mail, he didn't just wear the plate. There was actually a padded gambeson, there was chain mail, there was perhaps other layers, and then, of course, his plate mail proper. And that is fully simulated in Exanima. So... If at the moment, I'm wearing a cloth shirt. I can put a tunic on top. If there were chainmail, I would put chainmail on top. And then, of course, I could put my breastplate. Which looks utterly ridiculous on Nadine. They molded the steel to match her supple breast, which is very bizarre. Uh, similarly, with your head, if you were to wear a plate helm, you don't actually need to equip these things, but you can. It is fully simulated. You can put on a padded uh, cloth cap. You can put on a chainmail coif, and then, of course, you can put on your plate helmet. And there is a large variety of helmets available to us for whatever reason. <laughs> We've got, like, a 300 helmet here. And then this fucking thing. Uh, so, eventually, what what's going to happen is, as you level up your characters, the more and more armored they get. So, you start wearing nothing but cloth, wielding nothing but, like, meat cleavers and rusty swords. Until, eventually, you become a fully plate mail like gothic knight and you will wield things like this fucking halberd you'll wield a two-handed uh war hammer you will wield a two-handed zweihander kind of thing it's crazy uh i have played with full plate mail characters and it's amazing you have duels and they take fucking forever to finish because <laughs> unless you have the proper weapons you do very little damage like, unless you're you're wielding a war hammer, as they did historically, you're doing zero damage. So it was incredibly interesting to play like that and see that sort of simulated with this physics-based system. But I don't think and I can't imagine that we will reach that level in this series because it takes a huge amount of gameplay to actually achieve any ranks. 
At the moment, all of our characters are Aspirant rank or Inept rank. So that is rank one and two of six ranks. And I just want to take a very brief moment to talk about ranks and equipment and then we'll possibly get into combat again. Uh, so Nadine is an Aspirant. And as I said, that is rank two of six. So it begins Inept, Aspirant, Novice, Adept, Expert, Master. Now these things essentially affect what matches you can enter and what equipment you can use. So I have some weapons here. For example, this battle axe is a novice weapon, so I can't use that until I am rank 3. Same with armor and equipment. Uh, these cloth leggings, I can't actually equip until I'm novice. Um, and that's, uh, that's essentially it. Oh my god, Nadine, put your pants on before Anders gets the wrong idea. Uh, I basically don't need any armor for Nadine because she is not fighting any proper battles anytime soon. However, Anders and Harold much, much different. They need as much armor as we can possibly afford. So currently, Anders at Aspert rank is wearing a cloth shirt. He is wearing a belt and he is going to be wearing this padded coat over top. Um, armor, of course, has defense values against things like impact, slash, crush, pierce, which are pretty self-explanatory, I would imagine. Weapons like machete, machetes and meat cleavers have slash damage and thrust damage. Uh, impact and balance. Essentially, impact and weight affect the amount of momentum behind your swings and how easy it is for you to knock other characters over. Balance is how quickly and how easily you can parry and block. Uh, so, for example, if we were to look at Impact, Harold with his Sledgehammer. Now, I know this is easily grasped, but I just want to demonstrate. Harold with his Sledgehammer has a huge amount of impact, huge amount of weight, very low amount of balance. So it's very difficult for him to parry and block with his massive fucking Sledgehammer. Whereas Fatima, with her Quarterstaff, has very low impact but high amounts of balance. So she can easily parry and strike very quickly. Now, as far as skills go... We can train skills in close combat, armor, and shields. And I think I just want to take a look at Anders to see what he's got going on. Uh, so he has the repost skill, which allows him to parry and rapidly attack. He has a few shield skills, such as counter, which means we can rapidly counter with an attack after a block. He's currently working on persist, which means he can continue attacks while receiving blows to the shield. And this is essentially... Uh, what these the skills do they uh, affect what sorts of things you can do while parrying blocking um, I think there is a skill fend where you abandon your attack to quickly parry remise where you immediately follow a swing with another in the opposite direction so that's a one two swing so these sorts of things are the skills eventually I suppose there's going to be mental skills such as insight concentration and meditation none are currently present uh, there's very few skills when it comes to armor. There's maneuvering in armor, deflection, and security. And they're essentially useless at this point in the game. Uh, we really want to work on shield skills for Anders and close combat skills for the likes of Harold and Fatima. Now as far as equipment goes, I don't think there is much we currently can give Anders. Well, he is an aspirant, so I suppose we could give him some heavy quilted trousers. Now he's got some lovely white trousers on. Let's just organize his inventory a bit. He's got boots, he's got trousers, a cloth shirt, a jacket, and a belt. Now, it should be pretty obvious as well that this selector here just allows me to create different loadouts for each rank because, of course, even if your character is a master, they can still fight novice battles, so it's important that you uh, equip them accordingly, as we have done for novice. Now, if we are a novice, I'm sure we can equip these cloth leggings as well. We can equip... Uh, do I have a weapon? I do not. I don't have a weapon for him. And I don't have any additional armor, unfortunately. And that's just fine. Uh, do we want to wear a heavy padded coat? That is slightly better, so I think we'll switch out his black padded coat for a red one. Shazam. Now, ooh, it's a bit of a salmon. <laughs> Anders apparently loves the color red. There we go. He's looking a bit badass. Now, as for Harold, again, I don't think we have much for him. We could perhaps give him that black jacket. At the moment, he's wearing a 
white cloth shirt with a green tunic over top. And should we, do I have a sleeved tunic? I don't. We'll give him the leather tunic for whatever reason. I, that seems to fit Harold. Uh, <laughs> you can see his pecs are nicely outlined there. Um, we can also give him this purple whisket. Apparently at the aspirant rank, but I would much rather give him this padded coat. And I think we may be able to equip the waistcoat over top. Okay, yes, we can. All right, so we've actually got four layers of clothing on at the moment, I believe. Or is it three? Three layers of clothing. The padded coat taking the place of the tunic, and then the waistcoat on top of everything. Just like that. He's got his belt on, wonderful little waistcoat. And his pants. These are just leather plant, uh, pants, rather. And I believe we have these quilted trousers he can wear. Orange. Bizarre color for, <laughs> for combat. Once he's a novice, I imagine he can wear these blue pants, just like that. We'll put on the black jacket, the purple whisket, the belt, and the fucking boots. We'll put on the we'll put on the Jordans <laughs> and give him the sledgehammer. So that's basically how the inventory is going to work. Now I think we have time for one more match, one short match, and then we'll end the episode and move on. So you can see here we have a few different match types. Essentially, challenger. As I understand it, is a dual elimination. You have to fight a series of combat uh, combats and win every one. Duel is pretty self-explanatory. A fray is a free-for-all. The beast, I'm not sure what this is. I've yet to do it. And then, of course, there are some matches where you can enter more than one person in at a time, such as... Well, none are here at the moment. But I think we ought to... Uh, do we have time for an elimination? I'm going to say no. Let's fight a challenger with Fatima. Let's see what Fatima's got. Uh, she's got the old quarterstaff. I know that for sure. And here, Oh, God. She's fucking ready for it. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of space to move around. We can counter and take care. Oh, okay. We got a shoulder hit there. And we actually received a bit of a, a, bit of a cleaver hit there whilst striking at the same time. Yeah, for some reason, we're getting into... Uh, into a slow-mo mode here. That was a nice parry by Fatima. Though. Oh my good god. <laughs> Fatima's pretty face just got utterly ruined by that cleaver to the head. That was truly unfortunate. I don't want to have to write a letter home to her parents about that one. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> Fatima's doing her best, but the, the blood has just... It's, cl it's clotting in her eyes, and it's <laughs> difficult to see what's going on, but we're actually, I think, getting the upper hand in this combat. We're s slowly... Okay, we actually managed to knock her out with a kidney shot. Wonderful. Now here's Fatima. <laughs> I wish we could teabag her, but of course we can't. We could, of course, as well, loot the bodies of our enemies. But unfortunately, we don't keep any of the items between combats. But you can keep items between combats in eliminations. But I would thought I would just show you that we can strip these people down in the, the most cruel of fashions. And there we go, we now have a naked woman on the fucking ground. Good god, don't let YouTube see that. That does not meet the community guidelines. <laughs> Alright everyone, let's uh, visit our good friend Nadine. Obviously she's going to be thrilled that uh, Fatima was able to best that woman in a hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then I think from there we can uh, wrap up the episode. So, I just want to say thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment. Obviously, the more feedback I get, the more episodes I record, but I have a feeling that this will not last long on the channel. I just really wanted to fill space while I figured out what sort of long-term uh, series should go on the channel. And that's just fine. Anyway, uh, as always, my name is Incoherence. This has been the very first episode of our Exanima Arena run with good old Nadine's team. I hope to see you all later, and have a wonderful day.